Animal Crossing is a franchise that has always been near and dear to my heart. Engaging by its recent incredible success, I'm not the only fan. It has always had just a bit of building simulator, life simulator, and all these other small elements like the collection of furniture and the expanding of your museum. And I do mean just a little bit of all that, because what you mostly do in Animal Crossing is, uh, well, nothing. And that's what's always been so fascinating about it. More than a video game, Animal Crossing has always been a sort of meditation on video games. How much empty space can you put into something and still consider it art? What Animal Crossing sells you is more of an experience, a mood, compared to other games who try to hook you with satisfying progress or a story. Now, there has always been a general goal in Animal Crossing, that being the expanding of your house as much as possible and paying off the ridiculously high loans to Tom Nook. This was always supposed to be a sort of unreachable goal in the horizon. Motivating the player to continue playing, yes, but being more of a long-term goal more than anything. For more casual fans of the franchise, this has always been a point of contempt. Why play a game that actively wanted to waste your time and keep you grinding for as long as possible? This criticism was eventually taken to heart with the last entry in the franchise, Animal Crossing New Leaf, which sped up the progression considerably and allowed for the expanse and decoration of your city for a bustling and lively shopping mile. I personally played this game over many years and always enjoyed coming back to it for its large variety of activities. It also introduced more involved online play, where players could share their interestingly customized cities with each other, showing just how creative you could get in simple games like these. Of course, this faster progression wasn't really well received by the core audience and fandom of Animal Crossing. The consensus was, we want more things to do, more goals to achieve. With Animal Crossing New Horizons for the Switch, which came out last month, the criticism of the core audience was taken to heart. The game is packed full with more things to unlock, a new crafting system, expanded seasonal events which will come with updates, quality of life improvements, and obviously more social and online features fit for the size of its community, who has never been so large. I'm not exaggerating when I say that in times like these, this game has meant nothing short of salvation for many people trying to escape from the current reality, and therefore has been highly anticipated, by myself included. Ironically too, the last time I had contact with a human outside of my household was on the night of Animal Crossing's release. And you know, I had an online release party with my friends, we all delved deep into the game only to realize that the waters we were delving into were pretty shallow at the start. There's not much to do when you first start New Horizons, except for a bunch of waiting for the first few days of play. This was fine to me, honestly. I'm a generally extremely busy man, and I didn't mind just playing it for a bit every day. Unfortunately for me, though, I'm not the only person on the planet. Usually, this would be the point in the video where I come up with some shocking revelation about the game I'm discussing and start hammering down on why it's actually the worst thing ever and destroying the planet and killing kids, etc, etc. But this video is different, because this time it's personal. This time it's my fault. This is the story of how I ruined a perfectly fine game. This is a step-by-step -step guide on how I ruined Animal Crossing and got out of it. So, as I was saying, some of my friends were a bit more impatient about the game than me. No judgment, they relied on it more than me when it comes to the precious serotonin. When they started skipping a few days ahead just to have more things to do, I wasn't really phased. Mind you, the act of time traveling is oddly scrutinized in the Animal Crossing community as a whole. For a game so dead set on relaxing its players, the community packs a bite that is sure to surprise many as they venture through it, especially when it comes to how you are supposed to play this specific release. The way I wanted to play it would be far slower than most other hardcore Animal Crossing players, swearing to myself that I'd never time travel or cheat my way into faster progression merely enjoying the slow climb and build up to my desired bustling city. 
However, soon enough my worries about collecting all different types of fruit, finding bamboo and getting my first bridge built, were met by my friends talking about the layouts of their islands, where to place all kinds of buildings, and how to get rich fast. And uh, here's a little secret about me. I love efficiency. It's part of the whole reason why I like video games in the first place. I like to feel as if I'm doing the best thing the fastest, and almost defeating the game by completing everything in it faster than intended. So it might not come as a surprise when I say that hearing about all this made me nervous. Well, my friends and the people online were becoming billionaires on the Wall Street turnip stock market, I was selling weed, yes, and seashells just to complete some arbitrary achievements and earning next to no money. This was the first dent when it came to my motivation to play the game. The next one followed up just a few days later. March was ending and with it, many kinds of insects and fish would disappear and become unavailable for many months. Since I was planning on meticulously collecting each one, I asked my friends for more information on which ones I should try and get. They weathered through hours of grinding and frustration to get all of them, and this already scared me off. All this sounded really stressful, but sure, I'll try. I'm in quarantine, what else do I have to do, right? Well. After two full days of trying to get a fish and failing, I was feeling pretty burned out. During these two days, I constantly looked for tips and tricks online, and was inundated with all the fun, crazy things the others did with their islands. They all looked gorgeous and were styled so creatively, which brought the harrowing reality of how long it would take me to get there even closer. I started feeling stressed whenever I booted up the game, and therefore playing it less and less. I was embarrassed when I went to visit my friends' islands, and even more so when they visited mine. They put in so much time and effort, and I just felt lazy compared to them. So instead of relaxing while playing the game, I was just stuck in my own head, thinking about how much more efficient I could be, and how I'm doing everything wrong. Yes, I am aware we are still talking about Animal Crossing here, but the phrase is just play it how you want to play it, and play at your own pace, don't really work when you yourself don't know what your own pace is. I was stuck in a rut. Now, how did I get out of it? Well, on the day I started to write this video, my best friend had a high price on her turnips. I just kept buying turnips and selling them on her island and got rich never having to worry about money or efficiency again. In a way, this allowed me to play Animal Crossing like I've always played it. Just talk to animals, eat fruit, buy clothes and collect fossils and insects. It was once again the experience I've always had with these games. I just had to have a little extra crisis to get there. So then, what can you take away from this video? Well, mainly, I just want you to know that the fun in games is subjective, and can come and go in unexpected ways. And also, maybe listen to what other people are doing sometimes, even if it's something you yourself probably deem beneath you. Who knows, it might be exactly what you need right now.